Romeo Serrano, Rise to the Nation of Israel, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And today's lesson we're going to go into, the laws of God are still in effect. Because you have a doctrine out there that um, has been perpetuated by Christianity that the laws of God have been done away with. And that in the case of this, the Bible, the King James 1611 version of the scriptures, that is not true whatsoever. So we're going to go through the scriptures and we're just going to get some... Um, some validation to show you that guess what that the laws of God are still in effect and they have not been done away with whatsoever we see that Christ teaches the law in the New Testament we see that the, even the apostles teach the law in the New Testament so now let's go let's open up to the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 and let's start with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all right or Yahweh Shai Mashiach all right in the Hebrew so <clears throat> and it reads think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophet, so Christ said it himself, it's coming out of his own mouth. He said, think not that he has come to destroy the law, all right? So that's talking about the first five books of Moses, all right? That um, breaks down into your five categories of your moral law, your civil law, your ceremonial, your dietary, and your sacrificial law. Christ said he has not come to do away with any, with any by any means, he has not come to do away with any of the Lord's holy laws. Okay, so now let's continue. Oh, or he said the prophets. All right, so now let's continue. He said, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So what were the things that Christ came to fulfill? He came to fulfill the very things that were prophesied about him in the first five books of Moses and in the prophets, right? So now let's get this real quick. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24. Real quick, Luke chapter 24. And let's get that in verse 44 to show you this is what Christ, this is what Christ meant when he said, um, that has to be fulfilled. So it says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. Right? So that's going to show you the, that Christ came to fulfill the things that were prophesied about himself in the Old Testament. All right? It says, And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So now, is this the part which Christ came to fulfill? Absolutely. He did not come to destroy the law or the prophets whatsoever. As we see, the laws and the prophets are still here even until this very day. Right? So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, Think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So you have a clear understanding what we what Christ means when he says he come to fulfill. He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one joy. Jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So now he says, Not the least bit nor the smallest part of the law shall in any wise pass until all be fulfilled. So that means that there are many prophecies in the Bible that have yet been that have yet been fulfilled. Alright? So now let's go to the book of Romans chapter. No, let's you know what, let's continue reading. <clears throat> Let's get some more understanding on this. So let's read it again from the top. He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot on one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. That's what Christ said, until all be fulfilled. So now let's read on. He said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So he's talking about the least commandments that you think that are not important. And that's what Christianity teaches, right? A man doesn't, has, doesn't have to keep his beard. Well, in the laws of God, it says that a man is not supposed to mar his head or shave his beard off. All right? That was a commandment that was given to the children of Israel. A woman is not supposed to shave her head. A man is not supposed to put tattoos or any type of markings or cuttings on his body. That is in the book of Leviticus chapter 19. That is in the moral laws. So those things are not to be broken the least bit nor the smallest part of, or portion of the law. Okay? So he says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, right? So, and shall teach men so. So those men who are out there teaching you that the laws of God are no longer in effect and they no longer matter, guess what? This is what Christ says about them. He says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so <clears throat> in the kingdom of, excuse me, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So that man is going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, meaning he ain't even going to get in. Basically, that's what Christ is saying. There's no way in the world that you can commit blasphemy against the Holy Spirit by teaching against the laws of the Most High and still think that you're going to get in, you know, thinking that, um, thinking that it's all good. No. 
or just thinking that that faith is going to get you into the kingdom of God. No, Christ said right here, whosoever shall therefore break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of God. So let's read on. <clears throat> and he says, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So now, all of the brothers and the sisters that are sitting there, man, showing our people, you know, that about the laws of God and teaching them, guess what? The Lord said he's gonna, you're going to be called the greatest in the kingdom of God. So that means you're going to get in. Why? Because you're standing up for the word of God itself. That means you're teaching people, you're showing them the ways or the error of their ways are wrong and you're showing them, look, look, this is how you're, this is how you're going to get into the kingdom of God by doing the commandments and teaching them. Right? So now when we learn the commandments, and that means we have to pass them on as well. Okay? So now <clears throat> let's go, let's read on. Uh, you know what? Let's go to the book of Romans now. Romans chapter 3 and verse 31. Let's get that. Let's show more. Because people think that, oh, you only need faith. You don't need the law. All you have to have is faith. In order for you know, in order for uh, for you to get into the kingdom of God, but that is not true. So let's read, <clears throat> and it says, "Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law." So Paul is showing you right here. Do we then make void the laws of God through faith? He said, "No." He said, "God forbid." He said, "Hell no." We do not make void the laws of God through faith. Remember. What does it say in the book of James? Faith without works is dead. So you have to have faith and you have to have the works to back it up. So that means you got to be a, um, you got to be obedient to the laws of God and you have to be applying them at the same time to your everyday life and in your walk, right? So that's why it said, yeah, we established the laws of God. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. This is another one that the Christians like to use in order to, to, in order to prove their, um, <clears throat> in order to prove that, you know, we're under grace, right? So let's, let's, let's read this. So Romans chapter 6 and we're going to read verse 1. And it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, Paul said, what? God forbid. So now he says, shall we continue in sin, right? So sin is what? Sin is a transgression of the law, all right? According to the book of, of 1 John <clears throat> uh, chapter 3 and verse 4, okay? So now it says, um, so now it says, let's go back. So now it says that grace may abound. So what is grace? Grace is that little space that we have been given in this captivity in order to do what? In order to repent, all right? Grace is the blood of Christ being, uh, his, when Christ shed his blood for us. And he's actually given us the opportunity to do what? To repent and come back to the Most High and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's the grace that has been given to us. It doesn't have anything to do uh, with, okay, if I, if I sit there and go to the club and fornicate and do all of that, um, you know, uh, the next, uh, on Saturday night, then go to church on Sunday and I'm going to be forgiven. That's not grace. That's just you being a homeowner and then trying to seek forgiveness for it. Remember, the, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I believe, chapter 15 and verse 20, it says that, you know, we ha God has not given us a license to sin. You see? So that's what we have to begin to understand. The Lord does not give us any type of permission to sin against his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. All right? So again, let me read it one more time. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? So shall you continue transgressing the laws of God so that you may receive more grace from the Lord and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Paul said, God forbid. He said, absolutely not. He said, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than we therein? So once you repent, how are you going to continue in transgression and sin? You cannot continue in transgression or in sin. That's what the Bible says. Let's go to the book of Romans. Let's stay in Romans and let's get chapter 7 and let's read verse 1. So it says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So now this is Paul showing you how the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. It does not, it doesn't sit here and say, though, since Christ came, you know, that was the end of the law, and that's it. No. Christ is, I mean, Paul is saying right here that the law has dominion over, over a man as long as he lives. So it doesn't matter, man. If, you see, if you're not keeping the laws of God as you're supposed to, then guess what? You're still in transgression. Okay? So now, <clears throat> so, um, so then Paul, he even gives a beautiful, um, he even gives a beautiful understanding on how marriage works. In the, uh, how marriage works and the, uh, uh, in the law. Okay? 
So if it shows you, man, if the wife, if the if a wife be married to a husband, right, and the husband is still alive, and she be on, she move on and marry another man, she is considered an adulterer. Okay. So now let's go to the book of uh, let's go to the book of Matthew's real quick, um, chapter nineteen and verse sixteen. Let's see what Christ let's see what Christ says about us receiving the kingdom. All right. So now. This is um, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. And he says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right? So now, let's see what Christ says. <clears throat> and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none, <clears throat> there is none good but one, and that is the Most High. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Well, wait a minute. This is Christ telling this 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 um, telling this man. He's like, if you want to enter into life, you got to keep the commandments. So that goes for every single last one of you, you Christians out there, okay? And those who, who uh, profess Christianity, if you want eternal life, you got to begin to keep the commandments of God and understand that they're not done away with whatsoever. Because now you can't use grace as your scapegoat to 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 um to believe that you can get into the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't work that way. You got to keep the commandments of God. He said, but that's why Christ said, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. You have to keep the commandments of God to enter into life. Now, let's go to the very last book of the Bible, right? There are many other scriptures that's going to show and prove, man, that the laws of God are still in effect, even in the New Testament. But I just wanted to give a brief understanding on this. So now, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. <clears throat> and let's read this, okay? And it says, <clears throat> verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And so Christ said this in the very last book of our Bible, the living testament of God. He said, blessed are they that do his commandments. What commandments are we supposed to do? All of those commandments that you'll see that are written in the first five books of Moses and the other miscellaneous commandments that are throughout the scriptures itself. Showing you how to love your neighbor, how you treat your neighbor, how you treat, um, you know, how men have to treat their wives, you know what I mean? How fathers have to raise their sons, how righteous marriages have to be conducted, how do you get through, how you get through righteous marriages without adultery, sin, or fornication, all of that. How women have to cover their heads, how men's heads have to be uncovered, how you build a congregation, how you maintain a congregation. All of that is in there within this very book that so many want to cast off to the side, man, and let it collect dust. But Christ said right here, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, right? That that salvation that you so desperately desire and that you're seeking for, that you may receive it, right? He says, and may enter in through the gates into the city. What city are, what city are we looking to uh, enter into? The new Jerusalem that is being prophesied here that we're reading about in the book of Revelations. That is what, that is the city that we desire to enter, all right? So... Um, check us out, man. Sons of Isaac Israelite School. You know, we're located in Sumter, South Carolina. Um, you can also go to our YouTube and, <clears throat> and uh, check out our other videos that we have on baptism, uh, the understanding of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. There are many other topics you can go into, but for now, I'm off. I'm uh, Karash Allah, and I'm signing off. Kwame Sharala, rise to the nation of Israel. Shalom.